I think uh, it also stems from the fact that, that we're all from the Pacific and that's just how we do things. Um, we do things as a community and we help each other out. Christian Gerg and I work for GIZ. Hello, well, my name is Vanda Aswachenti. My name is Rebecca Elden. I'm with GIZ from the NDC Hub. My name is Amit Singh and I work for Pesco Community. So my name is uh, Anne-Claire Guaron. I'm working for SPC and for the NDC Hub. My name is Shani Lassaniog and I'm from the Global Green Growth Institute. My name is Noe Mutin, I'm from the Global Green Growth Institute. My name is Priya Chen and I work for GSM. My name is Maria Rona Luna Pastorizo Sekiguchi and I am with the Greenhouse Studio. We are very proud to say that we are Pacific driven or Pacific led because we have a steering committee with four persons who are um, elected out of a committee of 14 so called focal points. And these focal points are responsible persons in their national ministries who deal with climate change in the 14 Pacific Island countries we are working for and we're working with. So that's why we say we're Pacific driven and Pacific led. And uh, the second thing, if I may add, uh, is that we are demand driven. That's the second claim we're very proud of because we gave those 14 countries uh, twice the chance to hand in um, their requests for, for, for technical assistance all around their nationally determined contributions, their NDCs or their climate plans, if you want. They send in their requests and, um, and those requests, if I may add, we, we, we realized in these uh, years we have been working, they can be clustered around four major topics. So one is all around legislation, policy, developing those plans, um, enhancing those plans. Uh, at the very high policy level. A second uh, cluster, if you want, is all about uh, capacity building, building up the capacities of the ministries, working on these national plans in order to fulfill the commitments these countries made in the Paris Agreement. And a third cluster is about NDC implementation, so implementing those plans. They ask us for technical assistance in the implementation of parts, of course, only of those plans. And last but not least, there is a, a, a cluster all around monitoring, reporting, verifying data because the country is committed in this Paris Agreement to, um, uh, 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 to do it science-based and based on data which is uh, verifiable and that is uh, quite a technical feat to, to, to manage that. So that's the fourth type of, of request they, they hand in. And once we receive the request, we, we are um, very lucky to have uh, four very strong organizations with different strength. We have a look at those requests. We worked on 36. We are still working on some of them in these first two phases. And then we see who of these partners can best cater for that. And we choose that partner and that partner takes it up, goes to the focal point, speaks with them, does the scoping, timelines and delivers. Mm, yes, so, so just to build up on that, um, I often feel that that is the NDC hub superpower. We are demand driven mm -hmm. um, and we are Pacific led. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also very much in line with the SDGs. So mm -hmm. in particular goal 17 where we talk about the global partnerships for sustainable development and that basically talks about the multi-stakeholder partnerships that we make um, where we share expertise, um, funding um, mm -hmm. and so in our case that's exactly what we're doing so at the international level we've got international financial partners our donors uh, Germany, Australia, New Zealand mm -hmm. and then we've got our four uh, regional uh, development partners mm -hmm. uh, who are leading in the Pacific so mm -hmm. we have that structure in place what impact or what benefit do you think that that brings um, not just to the region but to the NDC hub itself? I think the strength for us is actually we are located in the Pacific even though we are four different partners from uh, various 
uh, focusing on the various agendas, but uh, I think we're focusing on a common goal mm -hmm. and we're doing it uh, with, the, with the country focal points. And I think that's where the strengths are in offering our services to them. So we are not leaving our knowledge uh, behind here. We're here and we'll be here because we have a 10-year strategy. I think so knowledge sharing is one of the key aspects of yeah. this partnership. Yeah. As uh, Christian has mentioned and as uh, Noim has mentioned, I think I, will, I just want to add that, you know, uh, with this multi-partner platform, we are building on the expertise that is already exist existing in each of the partners and within the organization also. So if you look at, for example, uh, for SPC, the projects we, we have uh, done, we have always engaged, uh, you know, the technical expertise within the organization uh, at first and, and try to build it to, to support our countries. Um, with the request, so I think uh, I think it's, it's it's really important to mention that then we are using this existing expertise within the four partners, building on that, and then within the organization as well, and that has brought out this unique way of you know uh, assisting countries with whatever existing expertise we have at the um, yeah, amongst the partners. Yeah, Venda, um, any thoughts? Yes, um, thank you colleagues for um, those uh, remarks. I totally agree with um, my colleagues from uh, GI, SPC and of course um, GIZ. We do things as a community and we help each other out and through that um, the partnership between SPRIP and um, the NDC hub is, is also very similar whereby we also um, get assistance from our other partners um, who have um, similar objectives and, and assist us with implementing um, certain country activities. So in, in that sense, um, not only are we helping um, building the relationships between each of the partners to do this work for the, for the Pacific, but at the same time, we're also assisting the countries um, and delivering the requests that they've, they've asked of us. Um, so yes, partnership is very important. And, and I like that. that that's how NDC Hub works. Yes, Vanda, I love your reference to community. Yes. Um, well, maybe in that regard to kind of expand the reference mm -hmm. to community, um, we, we partner kind of externally with the UNDP and IRENA. IRENA is the International Renewable Energy Agency. Um, and through these partnerships, through our monthly coordination meetings, both organizations were able to take over requests that we got from countries, but that the NDC hub at the time didn't have the funds to implement. So we were able to, through these partnerships, hand them over to the UNDP and IRENA, who then ensured that Pacific Island countries still got the support that they were asking for. But of course, we work in contribution to the NDC Partnership, yes. mm -hmm. um, who, which is a global organization supporting NDC um, implementation in, in all countries. So it's always that's another really valuable partnership. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree that you know we have this, uh, like you mentioned, when the, the spirit of partnership, you know, community, like you mentioned, Priya. I think that is what makes the NDC Hub very unique. In, because you know we're four different partners, we're four different players in the region, but we all have the same mandate to service the Pacific Island countries, you know. And I think that is what is the core of our very being in the Pacific. We are tied by that uh, similar objective and mandate to support uh, um, our countries, you know, uh, with their climate ambition, climate action plans, and you know, be global leaders in climate action, essentially. Why the NDC Hub I feel like is very unique in that sense also is because we have that country ownership. I think mm. that is super important. Mm. We have a steering committee, you know, from the three sub-regions of the Pacific mm. and we're at the helm of our operations. So I think that country ownership is what really uh, sets us apart and, you know, really helps us progress as we, you know, meet these tight sort of delivery timelines and, you know, these global events like the COP. So, yeah. Mm. Thank you, Shanila. Um, I just wanted to, I think, point out a lot of some of the important words that came out during the conversation. I love the word community. I love the word um, partnership. You also talk about the spirit of community, the spirit of partnership. And I think um, at the heart 
of the structure of the hub. This is, you know, what it's all about. Um, it sounds like an incredibly syner synergistic approach, mm -hmm. you know, wherein you're harnessing the strengths of already what's there with all of the different partner organizations that have been serving the Pacific Island countries, already have trust and credibility among the different countries, and then putting more strength behind, you know, everyone. Okay, so I heard earlier Christian said 36 requests. And I know those 36 requests are like projects. They're not like small projects, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to find out this started, I mean, you started getting the requests when the pandemic essentially started. How did you handle, you know, working together, you know, in the hub, in the midst of COVID-19? One thing that, that struck me immediately uh, is that, for instance, my my bilateral talks with, with my colleagues have uh, changed during that time because most of the time we were talking about how to keep the balance, uh, the mental health, how to cope with uh, working in small spaces with uh, plenty of kids who are not uh, in schools. So um, it really um, made us come even closer just to, to, to have first uh, a talk on, on to check how, how we are feeling as human beings. And then, uh, um, of course, um, the pandemic changed the way we work and it will probably not... Uh, uh, it, it, it opened up the range of possibilities in terms of flexibility of working from home or for whenever you are, uh, uh, working virtually, you know, we're having Banda and Claire all the time uh, um, by, by video in our meetings and uh, we got so, so used to that and that's fine. Of course, now that some of us could come back to the office, we see um, how, how, how enriching that is and how much uh, that brings with. But uh, still, it, it, uh, for those commuting, for those who have a kid who is sick, um, I think uh, employers will not be able to push that back, which is very positive. It's, it's, if you want a positive side of the pandemic, that we got more plus, uh, flexibility on that side. So yeah, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, we have had from the partners that we have been innovative in our approach in, in dealing with the country request and delivering country request during the pandemic. But there's one thing I want to touch on uh, is that, uh, you know, we have been country centric in terms of um, uh, getting the request done. So that when I say country centric, what it means is right from the time we developed the project, we have are in close contact with the country reps. Uh, and we, when we do the procurement, we are also in close contact with the country reps so that you know we are able to identify uh, risks uh, of doing uh, projects uh, during uh, you know COVID time and also mitigate that during the procurement by having let's say in-country consultants or having uh, two in-country consultants mm -hmm. for a large project. So I think uh, that was uh, uh, the other most uh, you know good thing that we have done uh, during, during this time and uh, is a lesson learned for us moving forward that whilst we are delivering this project in, in the countries, uh, you know, right from the beginning, from the time we developed the project, uh, it needs to be country-centric uh, and, and, and it makes your life easier in terms of doing it remotely. You can also see Anne-Claire and Vanda there who I feel might want to share their own experiences. Did you do a lot of uh, hybrid sessions with the team here because uh, you could meet in person? How was your experience like, Anne-Claire? I feel more comfortable to travel less than I used to do before. And I think it's uh, much more aligned with uh, the climate change commitment of the Pacific. Now I'm thinking, you know, Vanda, for you, lockdowns were not such an, an issue a year ago, <coughs> but for now it is. How, how has been your experience so far? I think um, uh, lockdowns um, have gone to show the ability of us as human beings to adapt but also to overcome any challenges. Um, so yes, you know, they keep saying uh, we are a resilient uh, group of people in the Pacific um, and, and we're able to overcome any obstacles. And I think you can see now that uh, a lot of the countries around the region, including Samoa, um, are experiencing a number of lockdowns because of that. But at the same time, um, we're always uh, finding ways, always finding um, solutions to problems that may arise. Um, the other point also uh, is the leader, leadership. I think with any organization and with any group of people, leadership is very important and that plays a part as well um, in, in how, you know, in, in, in the, I guess, in, in the success of anything. 
And, and so in, in that sense, I acknowledge um, um, Christian, but also Frida, who was there before in leading the NDC hub and, and being able to deliver the uh, not just the request of the countries, but making it a, su a success and making a name for NDC Hub in the Pacific. Because the donors are flexible given the COVID-19 uh, lockdowns and, and of course, you know, the non-traveling um, from, from all, all the partners and the focal points, the uh, donors have been very understanding and very patient. And uh, finally, I, I want to acknowledge the team that, that I, for me, that's also played a huge part in the success of the NBC Hub is the team. Uh, how all of us donors have been able to come together and work together as one team. Because at the end of the day, we know we're doing this for our people. You know, we're doing this for our children. Come 10, 20, 30 years, some of us may not be here. But at least the, the work that we're doing now will have some impact and, and improve the lives of our kids down, down the track.